This video is a bit of a saga because uh, there was a lot involved in getting this to this stage. So, I don't know, I think maybe it's uh, useful to a few of you because there's a bunch of different processes and getting this to this result, metalwork shrinking, filling, uh, spray filler, and then obviously the painting techniques. So I'm going to have to split it into two parts, at least two parts, because I've already done the first part and it's already like over for half an hour. Sadly, I have to report a fail. Because yesterday when I mixed up this bog, I uh, didn't put enough hardener in it. And there's only one thing to do with bog that's not gone off. Let's take it out. So saddened by the waste, but it ain't never going to be hard enough to sand and it's all got to come out this is actually quite satisfying peeling this off so that's my silver lining very small silver lining it is so I could have done without wasting all this filler but what we say is, it is what it is. So the scrape got most of it off. Now, I'm going to blade the rest off. And I fear we'll be left with some residue. The trouble is, you can't sand this crap off. I mean, it just clogs up the, the sandpaper but uh, get the residue off with a razor blade or go to hospital trying and uh, I guess panel wipe to stick the stickiness out of it re scuff it and reapply it's just as though I was never here yesterday never happened right take two so I've reduced the area that the filler actually or my understanding of where the filler actually needs to go a couple of pen pencil lines on there uh, I don't know, I might just mix it up like I normally would, stick it in there, see how it goes. If I need to put a big scoop in there later, I, I can do that. Yeah, just the light appearing there. There you go. If that doesn't go off, buy a new bonnet. And now for another scoop. I'm gonna do a, I'm just gonna do the, these areas. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull across the whole lot. Maybe just uh, stick it in these areas first, and then pull the whole lot around it. And the phone's on the blink, literally on the blink, 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 blink. 
to these low areas and just stuffing with the sandpaper. There's a good key there. There's nothing more frustrating than doing what you think is the last skim of filler and then getting to the end of it and realising you've missed some and then having to mix up and do again another last one. So I'm at the stage now where I've marked all the little pinholes and nicks and, and whatever that I need to take care of. There's a big one there. A ledge there. Looks like an adhesion problem that. Tiny little bit of roughness in there. It's almost nothing. The uh, primary will probably take care of that but that's not good. In here this is where uh, I tried to wipe some filler that had already kicked in there. Looks rough. It doesn't smell it, feel it. So I've just uh, gone over it with the board, a 180, and then just buzzed the DA over, DA over it with a 180 on it. And now I'm going to panel prep it and get it in primer. Just filling the back of the bonnet in the area that we did the stretching and the, where all the damage was just to uh, try and conceal it because it was nasty looking very nasty looking right so I just got on and uh, did all the rubbing down and the prep and the, and the whatever to that because I've got uh, I've got to get on with it I've got a delivery coming in and uh, if I don't get this in primer now it could be a couple of days before I get back to it so I just went, wanted to smash through it so now I'm just going to mix up the primer and get it on there shouldn't see the, uh, the damage to that other side now and it's nice and smooth the, as you can see the light is failing but oh yeah definitely what we do is we grab this the light is failing and uh, but we've got the primer on there so that's safe it's not going to go rusty and uh, we can go back to work now and uh, pick this up really when we're ready to put the spray polyurethane on it and uh, and get it ready for uh, top coat so next on the list is doing a boot and the front spoiler bib type thingy So we're back onto the bonnet. Obviously, this is the inside of it. And this is where the damage was that we used the spray cheese on. So spray polyurethane filler again. So I'm going to block this down. Could almost get away with it as it is really, but uh, it's just too thick. So we'll block that down. I'll set up the camera in a minute. I'm just moving some stuff off it. But, uh, get the inside block down first. Got it laying on some cardboard here so it doesn't scratch up. But once the inside's done, flip it over and start the, uh, start the work on the outside. Having just done the, uh, small area on the B side 
I've now got to start blocking down this spray filler. This obviously had the big repair in this area. But I think I'm going to start with the wing. Just get some guy coat on here. Just get this down in 120 to start with. down this is half the bonnet done now 120 with the bottom of this line and this radius now done the center line done and now what I'm going to do we're leaving this tape where it is is re guide re coat it and do it to 180 and then I'll re guide coat it again and do it to 240 and then when it's to 240, I'm going to remove the tape off of here and 240 this. So this will remain 120. This will go uh, 180, 240. And when it's 240 to this line, peel that off. No, I won't. I'll start again. When it's to 240 here, I'm going to run the tape along this line. Then I'll peel that off and take this 180, 240, and this side of the bonnet is done. Once this side of the bonnet is done, I can move on to the other side, and I'll start by putting a tape line on here to mark this center line. So I'll be protecting that edge as well, this, this radius here, until 120 is done, and just do the same process again. But actually, I mean, looking at where we are now, it's... Uh, super flat there's no burn through onto the metal i did a little bit on this side that was just through being careless but uh, on the main area where all this damage was in here no burn through so it's coming on and then this front radius is coming nice as well and there we go so i'll set up gopro put it on time lapse and uh, continue recording the GoPro has no battery, so a quick video here, of, or a quick clip of that's now been guide coded and we're ready to do the 180 with it. I'll go and pop the GoPro on uh, charge so that maybe we can get the 240. This is just a few minutes with the 180 and you can see the 120 scratches. So we'll rub until those scratches are gone like they have here. You can see obviously it looked really smooth with the 120 the 180 just shows you that it wasn't got track marks in it and scratches and all sorts of stuff 
is most of the one you want 20 right start again this is most of the 120 scratches out now you can just sort of see a tiny few left and then there's this area up here along this line and along the edge here so I've got to be careful around here because I'm threatening to break through here I'm threatening to break through there I've already broken through the filler and I haven't gone to the metal so you've just got to be really careful around there you can see it going dark in these areas as well but it's not through a couple of breakthroughs not serious a couple of minor scratches there That's the 180 done. So now I'm going to pull this piece of tape off, just like this, and that reveals the radius, which I shall now do with the Dura block. But I should change the 120 out to 180, and I'll actually use the long one. Just getting in the last bit with the 180 here, just around this corner. We can focus on the won't look any different to you, probably. But that is the end of the 180. With never 100 percent but most of the scratches out of it. I just grabbed this large surface area pad. I was using that as well. Just to give it a final flat and now I'm just going to put some uh, rub through 1k epoxy primer on those spots. I've mostly been doing this on time lapse because it's a very lengthy progress process. It's a very lengthy process and you wouldn't really benefit from getting hours and hours of footage of me board sanding a bonnet. Driver's side's gone really well. A couple of breakthroughs, nothing serious, nice and flat now, good crisp lines. But we've got to the passenger side, and the left hand side here done in 120 is fine. And then got to the inner section, and we have another bump. I can't work out why we've still got a bump, but it's pretty significant. You can feel that. You can see it. Uh, I didn't think it would go down as much as it has done, but judging by the colour here and the colour here, I'm just about to break through. So I can't sand any more without putting something in there. So it could well be filler. Or we could maybe spray some more polyurethane spray filler in there. The next clip will reveal all. Because at this stage, I don't know. But it ain't staying like that. The time has come to deal with this lagoon. And this sub-lagoon. So I'm going to mix up some filler. And attempt to do a scraping, scooping, filling with the spline. Wish me luck. That didn't go well at all. It, uh, as usual out here, set up really, really quick. And, uh, 
yeah, basically halfway through a pull, kicked and end up as rough as a what they say as rough as a badger's ass, eh? So we just hope there's enough in there to uh, fill the lagoons and let that set off a bit more. It's kind of nice and warm from the reaction that gives off heat. They call it exothermic. So we'll let that uh, set a bit longer and uh, attack it with the boards. Well, that was a, a busy few hours. So I ended up chasing this lagoon all the way up the panel but it now appears to be flat probably just in time before a massive downpour I think we're looking good this is down at 120 here and uh, yeah we're going to put some spray polyester filler and then block this down again this is now the underside of obviously the bonnet in 2k primer with a very light guide coat on it the other side has a second had a second application of spray urethane filler but what I'm going to do is 320 grit this off so really get it ready for painting and then flip it over so that we don't need to put it down on its top surface again and then re-sand, re-block, re-board the, uh, the A surface have my fingers crossed that so this is the last round of this old bonnet so after chasing the lagoon around the passenger side got it as good as we could with the filler and re-spray urethane fillered that half so went over the line a little bit just so we didn't get a step and uh, okay so now I've just masked that centre line off and we'll start blocking again 120, 180, 240 I'm not going to time lapse it you've seen enough of me dancing around this whole thing to last, last you until the next project so I shall show you the result or not right That is now 240 grit all the way through there. It's not actually rub, rub through there, it's just going a little bit light. Same up there, but it's still on 120. So I'm going to reverse tape here, take that tape off, and then 180, 240 on here. Once that's done, reverse this tape, and then through the steps along the front edge there side edges and then that is ready for priming eventually I think I started this bonnet sometime last year <laughs> three months probably but uh, obviously I haven't been at it all the time but it's certainly taken some hours serious hours into that bonnet I don't know, I reckon 50, 70, 80 hours, I don't know, a lot. But, uh, well, it will be worth it. And it is the last 
piece. I know it's already painted red. This is in uh, 2K epoxy for the primer, not epoxy. 2K for the primer. So, just now to do it, go over it with 180, 240, and then when we get to the uh, spray room, we'll hit it with the machine with uh, probably 320 and 500 for the final spray. All right, that's my spline. There's 180 on there, and uh, just keep going at it the die cut's gone and we're up to the line and then we'll hit it with the 240 and we'll move the line and go through the bonnet 180 240 180 240 probably that's just the 180 so so I don't have to keep flipping paper on the spline and wasting it we've got it done what I've done on the other side which is do the 180 up to the line obviously I've marked the front leading edge line there so do the 180 up to the line then mark the middle and do the 180 in the middle and I just leave these little edges till I change the paper and then go through with 240 and then finally move the edge over and then deal with that all right slowly but surely we're getting there. That's the last section to do in 180. I had a little rub through here. I'm going to blame the wife because she came out and distracted me and I just kept moving my arms. I look back down again and there's a bit of shiny metal there. Just about to go through the primer there into the uh, filler primer. But okay, that's no problem. Um, yeah, it's coming in nice. So just do this bit here with the 180 and then move the tapes around. No, not move the tapes around. Do the same in 240, then move the tapes around and then carefully do this bit that's not been done. Hopefully you're following. I think I got it right because that's a 240, that's a 240, that's a 240. That needs to go to 240. So I re taped that swage line and I'll take that off of there. And also that one. And also that one. And that will allow me. To get the center of the bonnet and to get the swage lines here nice and crisp. Could just nib at that ever so slightly with a 180. I'll probably just do it all in uh, 240. Anyway, to here with 240, and I think we're all but done. All but done. Next time you'll see this, hopefully, it'll be red and on the car. Cheers.